I said in my last video that I'd probably be creating less videos moving forwards, but I also said that I would like to create videos when I feel just generally called to do so without any schedule. And one thing that came to me, I think, through the comments that you guys left after that video was the real need for true, genuine, authentic, human-to-human -human content created here on YouTube. Genuine content that we can all relate to and that can help us in some ways through life. And this morning I was preparing for a presentation that I'm giving this evening to a photography group. And while doing so, I was looking back at a number of my images throughout the years to, to create a collage of images of, of my journey as, as a photographer. And during that process, a lot came to me. A lot came to me about how looking back at our images can actually be a really beautiful thing to do. And it can reconnect us with moments in our past, both the happy times that ignite beautiful emotions within us, but also looking back at images that we created during more of the difficult times. And that's where I come on to the topic of today's video. Almost three years ago now, my granny passed away. I was really close to my granny. She used to pick me up from school every day and I'd also go to hers for most of the school holidays. I was very fortunate in the last few weeks of her life to be able to move back to, to live with my family so that I could care for her in her last few weeks alongside my mum. And during that time, we were entering into the second lockdown. So it was quite a difficult time in some respects because there was like no help available. And it was also quite isolating because we couldn't just go out and meet with, with friends or go to support groups or things like that, that, that some of us may be able to access at other times. You know, it was a very isolating time with very little help, both from the medical world, but also from a social side of things as well. But in some ways that was a blessing because I wasn't working at the time and I didn't have any other commitments, which meant I could actually be there for my granny in the last few weeks of her life, which is something that was, was very difficult, but it's also something that I'm very grateful to have been given the opportunity to have. And two of the things that got me through that time were going out into nature every day. And I mean every day. It didn't matter how much was needing done. I, I got out into nature for at least 10 minutes every day. And some days it would just be as simple as going outside and just standing in the garden and looking up at the sky and taking some deep breaths. And other days I'd go out for an hour's walk. And on those days when I'd go out for an hour's walk or where there was something exciting happening outside, like snow, which I'll get onto in a minute, I would always take my camera with me. And this morning when I was reviewing the images that I'm going to be showcasing in tonight's presentation, I came across a bank of images that were created in the last few weeks of her life. And I felt really called to share this video with you today because in the moment of looking back at those images, I realized quite a lot. And I also was able to feel things that I've never been able to feel since her passing. And as fellow humans, something that we will all face at some point in our life is a loss of a loved one. Whether that's a, a fellow human or whether that's a pet, we go through a lot of grief when we experience the loss of either because these people and these pets play such a big part in our life. And when they are getting towards the end of their life and when they do pass over, it can bring up a lot for us and it can be very difficult and challenging to navigate. And I, I guess because I think a lot now about the well-being benefits of photography, I feel potentially for some of you who are either experiencing grief just now or who will go on to experience grief soon. And also for all of us who have experienced grief in our past, you know, there's always residual from that. And I feel maybe sharing this might just give you some comfort and also maybe help you to navigate anything that you may be experiencing now or may be experiencing in the future. I think what came to me this morning was two things. Firstly, was when we are faced with the loss of a loved one, it's really important to take some time for us. And it's also really important to be able to get out a little bit and to get fresh air and to spend a bit of time in nature and to also engage with the things that we love. Even if it's just for 10 minutes, you know, it's obviously during these times, it's like we're feeling a lot and there's a lot to do but it's like we need to take that time for ourselves. And for all of us here, I imagine all of you anyway, photography is one of your pastimes. And for me, being able to do that was hugely beneficial. But the second thing I realized was being able to look back on the images created during that time 
Not only was I able to reconnect with my granny in some ways and the, the positive memories of her through the images that were created during this time, but I was also able to shift some things within me, some grief that I think I've still been holding on to. And I also started to see some symbolism in these images, which I felt really called to share because looking back at these, I've started to realise things that I didn't quite realise at the time. And it really showcases, I think, the healing power of photography. Because I speak a lot on this channel about what photography can do for us in the moment. Actually being out there right now in nature, what we're seeing, what we're feeling and the benefits of that. But I didn't realise properly until this morning the healing benefits actually of looking back at our images, of the emotion that can bring us in a very positive sense. And having those memories, but also those snapshots in time of how we were feeling in those moments. And this goes back to a video that I created a few weeks ago about how our photography is a reflection of ourselves and also a reflection of our internal worlds. And what I'm gonna share with you now in these images will hopefully represent that quite well. Now, the first image I'm gonna share with you from this time, the last few weeks of my granny's life, is this image here. Now, this was taken in a frozen puddle. And it's an image I've returned to time and time and time again, and I didn't really understand why. But if you look at the bottom left-hand corner, I've always referred to this image as elephant, because to me, this shape in the ice looks like an elephant. And I never realised this until today. But basically, like, I don't have any connection to elephants. I've never seen an elephant. It's never been an animal that I felt particularly drawn to. But one person in my life who had a very deep connection with elephants was my granny. Now, my granny lived in Kenya for a part of her earlier life. And it was a time of her life that she look, used to look back on with very fond memories. And when she moved back to Scotland, she took a number of furniture and wooden ornaments with her that were of elephants. I believe that nature is always speaking to us. I believe that we get signs and symbols around us all the time. And looking back at this now, it's an image that I can keep forever and have this connection to her. But also in the moment, it was like nature was trying to say something to me. And I hadn't realised that until this morning. And the fact that I keep getting drawn back to this image time and time again, there's definitely some symbolism in there somewhere. The second image I wanted to share is this photograph here. Now this was taken, was the day that I realised that my granny wasn't going to be around much longer. And I was out for a walk with my dad, we just had a really heavy snow shower which I was photographing and I then went and found this beautiful tree. This tree which is clearly very old. And in Scotland we have a number of granny pine trees. Now this isn't a granny pine, but this morning when I was looking at this tree and feeling about when I was connecting to it, I felt there was some symbolism in this also, because this is a very ancient, wise tree that I was feeling very drawn to in that moment of realising that my granny wasn't going to be around much longer. And in thinking about the fact that ancient pine trees in Scotland are called granny pines, I just find that very significant. And one thing that I photographed time and time again during these last couple of weeks of her life was lone trees in fields with snow coming down around them. Now, we all know that lone trees make nice images and it's something that many people photograph, but it's not something that I've ever photographed to my knowledge before this moment. And also, if we look at these images, it really resembles what was going on for me internally. Grief is a very internal process and it's a very lonely process because even if we're surrounded by people who are all losing the same person, we all experience that grief and that loss in a different way. And at the time I hadn't really realised this, but looking back on the symbolism of these images, I was being very drawn to lone trees in the middle of fields that were bare for the winter, had no protection, were just standing there with the, you know, the elements hitting them from all angles. And every time I photographed them, there was snow coming down around them, which was shrouding their view. It was like their world was being, you know, shrunk. And they were standing there bare and naked against all the elements. And that's how grief can feel. You know, it's a, we can feel very, very lost, very alone, very up against all the elements. Things, emotions are hitting us all over the place. And the symbolism of this, these images to me represents how I was feeling in that moment. And weirdly, I'm just started speaking about this and it's, we've got sleet coming down around me. See, nature is always speaking to us. But like I so said, just looking back on this and the symbolism of why I was drawn to it at the time, I hadn't realised in that moment that these are visual representations of what was going on internally for me during that time. 
which I just thought was really poignant. Oh my gosh. No way. No way. A white feather has just fallen in front of me. Now we're not, we're in winter. This is like a, a pure white baby feather. Wow. Wow. I'm going to put that there. Okay. <laughs> Nature's always speaking to us. And the last image I'm going to share with you is this one here. And again, this spoke to me so deeply and how I was feeling in that moment. Again, snow coming right down around me. This image is very blue, you know, and it's a very cold blue. And again, you know, grief and loss, it's a very cold thing to experience. It's, it feels like cold emotions. Again, this closing in, this, this loss of the warmth that we once felt from that person or pet that meant so much to us. And while I was standing there in this blue environment with all this snow coming down around me, the sun was trying so hard to poke through. And it was almost like I was standing there in the elements with all this grief around me and this heaviness. But it was just kind of reminding me in some ways that there's light, there, there was hope and there was gonna be, you know, I had to deal with all of this and what was going on in my life and all the emotions. But it was reminding me that in the future, things will be brighter again. And it was just like giving me some hope through this hard time that everything was gonna be okay. Even in that, in that moment, if it didn't seem like it, and there was so much uncertainty and so much to deal with, but it was like just nature reminding me once again and this visual representation that I now have in this image of that hope, you know, that, that one day there would be light again, you know, and one day I'd be able to remember the happiness as well as the grief and sadness that I was dealing with in that moment. So I just felt really compelled after reviewing these images this morning and what came up for me to, to share them with you. I hadn't realised until today the power of looking back at our images. And I have a couple of members of my online community who are carers for their loved ones and they can't get out into nature and do photography much at all. But to engage in every month's theme and remain a part of the community, they look back at their old images and they reconnect with the memories of when they could get out and when they could explore. But until today, I'd not fully appreciated how beautiful it is to look back at old images. And also when doing so, how we see in those images ourselves and our internal world and how we were feeling in that moment. I just wanted to end today's video by saying, Loss and grief is something that we all experience and it can be really challenging to navigate. And if it's something that you are currently struggling with, you know, there's plenty of support out there that can help you. And during the end of my granny's life, I did have a therapist. So, you know, therapy is a fantastic tool that can help us through the grief that we may be experiencing in life. But also whether we have residual grief within us or we need a release from what grief we're feeling right now or that we've gone through in the past, nature, Getting out into nature and connecting with our passions during that time, such as photography, it could be really, really beneficial for us. And like I say, for me, without that connection to nature and without my photography, that period of my life would have been even more challenging than it was. And if you'd like to hear some more about how photography and connection to nature can help us cope with grief, I have two podcast episodes in the Photographic Connections podcast where I speak with fellow photographers who have really experienced this for themselves. The first is an Australian author and photographer called Emma Gray, who used photography, writing and getting out into nature as a way with dealing with the very sudden loss of her husband. And the most recent episode with Valerie Misa, she speaks about how doing photography and getting out into nature helped her deal with the emotions she was feeling when she lost her beloved dog. I'm realizing more and more every day the therapeutic benefits of photography and what I experienced this morning just really strengthened that for me. I just, I just felt very called to share this with you today. If you are experiencing grief right now, I send you much love. Thank you for getting to the end of this video. I hope it's given you some comfort and I will see you all again very soon. Gosh, this feather's not moved, look at this. I'm gonna take this home with me. Incredible.